We're doing a little post-mortem review right now, which Walter and I don't necessarily agree on some things that are here. So we may come to loggerheads on it, and there may be death in this one, and I don't intend it to be mine. Anyways, what the point is that I am trying to make is we thought we'd dissect the trip and talk about things that stand out for us, um, some things like what I'm arguing with Walter is I want to give an honest review of the facilities, transportation, things we saw, the hotel accommodation, all that kind of stuff. Honest in like, we're not going to tell you that everything on this trip was absolutely perfect and it was cloud nine. If you plan to come to Australia or for that matter, anywhere where you might want to travel in the world, you'll run into snakes and that's to be expected. Okay. Um, but I just thought we would talk about some of these kind of snakes or some of the things that could have been done maybe a little better, um, things that we found surprising, all of that, but an honest from our point of view. And when I say our point of view, I mean, my point of view is going to be a little different from Walter's because he's always right. I'm always wrong because I'm an idiot. Yeah. Could come to loggerheads. So right now we're sitting in our hotel room at the airport and this is uh, Ridges is the name. Yeah, Ridges. R-Y-D-G-E-S. It's a chain. Yeah. And in we, Australia. We stayed in another one too, didn't we? Yeah. It's sort of like a step above a holiday inn type of thing. Yeah. And first impressions of the room. Since it's only one night and we're right at the airport. In fact, we couldn't be any closer to where we have to check in for departure. They said on the TV screen. 181 steps and yeah pretty much um which is really convenient because our flight leaves tomorrow at what 9 20 in the morning yeah but they said originally they wanted us to be at the check-ins four hours in advance well we're right across the street it's like a small little laneway kind of a thing. I mean, that might be overkill because that would mean we'll have to be up at about four o'clock in the morning to get ready and then be out the door here around five o'clock to be there four hours before the departure. And so we'll be sitting in an airport for four bloody hours waiting for a 22 hour flight. Yeah, long days, days <laughs> for that. So anyways, the room itself, comfortable, got everything that you need. It's got like the bar fridge that's full of high price things, you know, the usual kind of thing you find in a hotel room. So that's fine. Um, now we did a little scouting about to see where we need to go to check in tomorrow, make sure there's no surprises. And as I said, it's very close and it's pretty much I'm, laid out. I'm glad we checked it out because we sort of got a little lost getting over there and ended up in the arrival section. And uh, now we figured out an easier route to get to where we need to go tomorrow, so. Yeah, we overshot, Yeah, basically. Um, so anyways, that's all settled out. In fact, we went to the information desk there at the airport, which I found there was actually people there that could give you information because in Toronto airport, there might be somebody there, and one, you probably won't understand what they say, and two, they probably don't know. Yeah, not good. But here, no, lady at the thing, she knew. And we so we asked her a couple of questions and basically she told us, nah, three hours before. So that cuts off an hour. We can get up at five instead of four and manage it from there. So that's good to know. So anyways, this whole, 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 whole trip. Okay, words, hard for me. Um, we're going to talk about just different things. So let's start with our flight here. Air Canada, Toronto to Vancouver, two hour wait over then from Vancouver on the same plane to Sydney. And that was another 15 hours. So with the holdover and everything, it's 22 hours to get here. Long trip. What was service like on the plane? Well, surprisingly, our check-in procedure and going through security and everything went very smoothly. Um, the plane was on time. We got on. Our seats were exactly what we had uh, booked for and everything. Because uh, as you know, we said before, we went premium economy. So we had two seats together. 
a bulkhead in front of us, lots of leg room. So can't come really complain about that. Yeah, if we could see through the curtain, the people in business class, and it made you go, oh, upgrade me, upgrade me. But that didn't happen. Um, service on the flight from the flight attendants was fine. No complaints about any of that. Um, Passengers were well behaved. We did not have a screaming baby behind us. Or... Actually, it was kind of nice in some ways because uh, the section we were sitting in, there was a lot of empty seats. Yeah, so that was kind of nice. Um, and yeah, they had, you know, your usual entertainment and everything like that. Um, so, and the food, well, the food was okay. Um, as far as airline food. I was. don't know, yeah. Airline food, do you ever, is it ever? They served us a sandwich halfway through. Yeah. It was supposedly chicken salad, but it could have been anything. We don't know what it really was, <laughs> but kind of. It could have been chicken tofu. Yeah. And all this. I guess my estimation of it is I didn't throw up, so it was okay. Um, yeah, so all of that was fine uh, with it. Uh, it's just, it's a long flight. Didn't sleep, really. I tried. Um, well, I don't know, I thought you were sleeping pretty good. Oh, you were asleep when you thought I was asleep. <laughs> what do you know? I mean, when you're sitting there, oh. I'm not. I was looking up at the ceiling because I was counting yeah. little marks on it. Whatever. <sighs> yeah, well, I was afraid you'd start snoring. You yeah. can't, uh, it's hard to snore when you're sitting up. Whatever. Um, so anyways, yeah, flight was uneventful. We got here. That was great, as you know. Okay, so Sydney was our first couple of days and we checked into the Meriton. Now we have stayed at, we stayed at the Meriton when we got here, we stayed at the Meriton when we came back to Sydney um, the last few days and every day. We stayed at a Meriton in Brisbane and we stayed at a Meriton in Gold Coast. Yeah. Now for what we wanted, they filled the bill. We wanted to have an efficiency room where we could cook if we wish to. It had a dishwasher in it. It had pots and pans and cutlery and dishes and things like that. It had a washer and dryer. In fact, that was probably more important than anything else. We wanted a washer dryer because we don't take a lot of clothing with us. So we try to arrange it when you're here for, th you know, over three weeks, you might want to do your undies. Okay. Yeah, and it's a washer and dryer. I think is the most important part because mm -hmm. most uh, a lot of the hotels came with little fridges, and that's the second most important. Yeah. Part. And uh, so I mean, I you could do with almost any room. Um, you could handle that um, in a hotel um, when you're traveling because you, a bit, but it's nice to have the washer and dryer if you need to. Do your undies. Like, I don't understand the people who travel and they're gone for a week or two weeks and they have cart loads of luggage. We saw this in the lobby of the hotel. People coming in and they had three, four suitcases a piece to the point where there were so many suitcases they had to get one of those big luggage rack things and pile them up to take up to the room. It was like they were staying for a year. And we like to travel as lightly as we possibly can. So that's the reason for looking for hotels that have washer dryer facilities in the room. Now, the equipment that's in the Meriton, it's cheap. It's extremely cheap. Now, I'm not saying that I'm expecting top of the line appliances. I expect appliances to work and to figure out how they work. The dishwashers, not that we needed a dishwasher that desperately, but we've got one. But trying to figure out how they work. They've been used so many times that all the numbers and control indicators, you know, what you need to turn for this, are all rubbed off them. Yeah, now uh, back to what, you know, like it has a full kitchen facilities and stuff. But the only really thing that we ate in the rooms were sometimes breakfast, right? Like with uh, toast and jam and uh, peanut butter and, and coffee. Uh, coffee and stuff. So that's the only thing that we really cooked. Yeah, we didn't, we cook didn't actually meals. cook any uh, meals. First time we were in Australia, we tried that. But yeah. Eh, yeah, forget it. it. Yeah, really. You're on holiday. Do you want to cook uh, with that? And uh, But anyways, like I said, the appliances are well used. And so you have to kind of figure it. One, in one of the Meritons we stayed in, I had to look it up on the internet to see 
uh, how to use the dishwasher because there were no markings on it. They were originally markings, but they'd been worn off over time. Same with the washers and the dryers. They yeah, varied. there was there was one Meriton. Which one was it? Where we were staying, um, where the uh, washer was not working properly. Yeah. Um, and that uh, was at Brisbane. That might have been Brisbane. Yeah. And uh, it uh, we didn't find that out until later in the uh, trip or later when we stayed there that the washer was not working properly so yeah but you can make things work and uh, the coffee maker important i like to have a coffee maker in the room and a lot of these hotels the meriton especially have the knockoff nespresso type type machines but they too are extremely cheap in one of the meritons we stayed and i think that was in brisbane we um yeah that's because we had that conference room and i have a yeah. feeling that a lot of those appliances they like didn't necessarily have the have uh were up to date on those yes yeah. they actually brought in a new machine for us because yeah. it did not work properly um and i think we told you about the fact that in the first room in brisbane in the meriton the bedroom the night table didn't fit next to the bed it was halfway down along the side of the bed and there was no room to move around it at all. In fact, you couldn't get into the bed with it because it was pressed up against it. So I took a picture, took it down the front desk and said, um, this isn't working for us. It meant that we'd have to unplug the clock and the light that were on it and move it, all that stuff out of the way to get into the bed. Well, then you couldn't use the clock or the light either. I don't know how they made the beds. I really don't. They'd have to unplug all that stuff, move the table out, make the bed, and whatever. So they moved us into I took a picture of it and said, do you see anything wrong with this? Like, really? Who was the brainiac that thought of this? Uh, but anyways, they changed us the room. We got a little better room, sort of. It, they called it a conference room. It had a huge table in it and stuff like that. Anyways, we survived that. You're never going to get anything that's ideal, okay? And we know that. But I'm just telling you this stuff just so you know. I mean, the Meritons are nice because you've got, uh, they're usually like, uh, you can get a one bedroom, um, uh, so you have a living room and a bedroom and stuff like that, and they're cheap. But you also have to put up with cheap appliances and stuff like that in there. Um, and so uh, what I mean by cheap, uh, you're spending uh, around 200 a night, so. Yeah, Canadian. Yeah. So really, you know, you're getting you're getting a fair amount of bang for your buck. It's just sort of annoying. And the other thing too is, and they're centrally located inside the city, yeah. so you're right downtown. They don't come in every day and clean your room, but that's not unusual in this day and age. Most places you stay in, they don't. Um, they say they'll tell you one of two things. Um, you know, oh yeah, well because of COVID, blah blah, or. They're trying to conserve energy, kind of going green. So, you know, if you do need clean towels, you know, and that, let them know and they'll bring some up to you. But if in some places are offering you incentive not to have the room done every day, like a $10 voucher, this place has it too, a $10 voucher towards, you know, one of the restaurants on site or something like that um, as well. Um, I'm not so sure how much that really is an environmental issue as much as it is a bottom line corporation issue because that means they can hire less people. Uh, I mean, in sites. some ways, I don't mind it because we've had hotel rooms in the past where uh, we want to be in the room halfway through the day and then cleaning staff want to come in yeah. and clean your room. And then you kind of got to get kicked out of get the room out. for a bit and stuff. So this way, in some ways, you don't have people invading your privacy yeah. all the time. So, and... And they never had enough little coffee pods for their coffee maker. I had to ask all the time. They're a little cheap about that. Well, we did stay several days at some of these hotels. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I think a lot of their their uh, people stay only one or two nights type. Of yeah, thing. maybe, whatever. But anyways, it's for the value, for the money, the value of it, it's, it's okay. It's all right for that. I mean, they're clean and, you know, you have all the amenities. So, yeah. Um, other hotel rooms that we stayed in, I have to say that the powerhouse 
in Tamworth was nice. Yeah, it's a Ridges Hotel, the same as the one we're staying in uh, from the same line as we're staying in at the airport. They're, they're a nice chain of hotels yeah. here. And, uh, you know, that's the place that had the fancy restaurant where we had the steak that one night, and that was good. So, yeah, that was okay. Um, and, you know, the rest were where we stayed were all fine. Nothing stands out as, oh, my God, I wouldn't stay there again. No, all the rooms we had were very clean. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, I booked a lot of these rooms uh, based on uh, uh, recommendations on the Internet and that. A few of them we stayed in, like the one in... Uh, uh, Port Macquarie uh, was a family run business. Yeah. And it was very nice. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we stayed in Coffs Harbor, was a family run place as well. And they were very, very friendly in there yeah. and nice. And the one we stayed in, Stanthorpe, was also a family run business, a motel. And it was fairly nice as well. Yeah. Except the TV set was really tiny. But, yeah. um, but, Again, I mean, we're only there things. for one night, so it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, yeah. So that takes me to then. Let's talk about the people in the service industry, the people who uh, serve you food, the people who check you into the hotels, all that kind of stuff, the shops and whatnot. And I have to say, we didn't run into anybody that was nasty or cold or belligerent at all. The People in all all factors of the sales business, sales system, you know, from the people who check you in the hotel to the people working in the little grocery stores or whatever, all are very friendly um, and fairly efficient about things too, which is a mm, bit of a far cry from our own country because you don't get that the same. Um, I mean, a lot of the people in the service industry in Canada, you go in, are friendly enough um, but they don't all go out of their way to help you with something. And here in Australia, they tended to do that. But people in general in Australia, we have found are very friendly, um, you know, polite. Uh, someone told me that one of the things that makes Australia or a characteristic of Australia is queue lines. Everybody lines up for everything and they do. But nobody's trying to cut off anybody else in the line. And people are friendly in the line when you're waiting for something. I mean, we didn't experience a lot of lineups for things. Yeah, but... and a lot of people are very courteous here. Yeah. I noticed uh, was that uh, an elderly Chinese lady was in a mall and she had dropped her cane and immediately somebody yeah. went over and picked it up for her. Yeah. Right, so, I mean, there's a lot of... Um, Seems to be a lot of goodwill to other yeah, people here. So, which is which makes it very nice. And also, even driving, people let me in when I was trying to get into a lane or something like that. Yeah, so. they didn't. If this had been downtown Toronto, like the way when we're driving in Sydney, and suddenly you're about to lose a lane, and you go, "Oh God, there's no lane there," um, you turn on that signal light. They're not trying to squeeze you out from getting in. In Toronto, they would. They just ignore you. It's every man for himself. So that's kind of nice, especially when Walter's trying to drive a car that's on the wrong side <laughs> when he's used to. Um, you need to go back into your notes because it timed out on me. So anyways, yeah, generally speaking, Australians are very nice people. We had no issues with them. Closest we had to, to someone who was in, they were just indifferent were the two ladies we mentioned the other day in the quilt store that had come in and I don't know, we, we didn't really engage them in conversation, but I did say, oh, I'm sorry, um, I won't put you in the video kind of a thing, and, you know, and excused the fact that it was a small place and we were kind of, you know, crowded in there a little bit. Uh, they didn't really acknowledge that. I think they were a little afraid we were invading their space. Yeah, that's real. Yeah. But, I mean, that's a minor thing. Like, yeah. No big deal on that. Okay, so let's talk, since we're talking about service, let's talk about when you go out to get something to eat. And you already know that uh, we've told you, generally speaking, you go up to a counter, you'll grab a menu, maybe go back to where you're sitting, look at the menu, figure out what you want, then go back up to the counter and order. And you pay for it at the same time. And then they'll sometimes give you a number or you give them a table number you're at and they bring it to you when it's ready. Um, 
oftentimes they'll pour you your, if you're having a beer or something, they'll pour you the beer right then and there at the counter and you can take that back. And then if you've ordered any food, they come and bring it to you. Not a lot of table service. When you do get table service, generally speaking, it's a little foreign to them as well. And it's a little rough around the edges in comparison to table service in our own countries. Yeah, like, I mean, if you order, let's say, an appetizer and a meal, um, sometimes they'll both come out at the same yeah. time type thing. And so there isn't the same uh, structure as to when people get food. Or I noticed in some places, uh, uh, two people sitting at a table and one got their food and the other one didn't get their food. So the one that got their food sort of immediately dug in and started eating it while the other one was waiting for their food. Yeah. So they eat things, um, they eat differently than we're used to in, in North America. Yeah. A lot of times if I go out with a bunch of people in North America and I get my meal first, I'll wait till uh, the other people get their meals. And usually if it's too long, people will say, well, go ahead and start. It'll get yeah. cold, right? Then. But um, the other thing too, though, that is nice about the fact that you don't have the table service is when you're done, you're done. You're not sitting there waiting, you know, check please or anything like that. It's already been paid for it. You yeah. already paid for it. And of course, the price you see on the menu, like everything in Australia, includes your tax, everything. So that's the and price. And it includes your tip. And it includes the tip. Well, well there isn't really there a, isn't tip, a tip. So, but you um, don't tip. You don't tip, right? No. So and so the other thing that is nice about that too is um, some places, if you go in North America, may frown upon you getting one meal and splitting it, or yeah. something like that. Where this you can do in Australia, yeah. no problem. Uh, you can get whatever you want to eat, or you yeah. may actually just go in for a drink and not yeah. get anything to eat, right? And uh, they will, uh, uh, they don't care what you order, you just, or take up space yeah. in there or whatever. You just go in and uh, order whatever you want, and uh, it, it comes out, and that's what you eat. Yeah, it's very relaxed. When you walk into most places, too, you sit wherever you want to sit. Um, some places may may take some reservations because we saw tables that said reserved. Um, um, some places will seat you, but you still go up to the bar and order yeah, food, and right? So, um, in some ways, it's a little annoying, but in other ways, there's advantages to it. Yeah. So, yeah, and you don't feel like you're rushed. You no. know, someone's not breathing right down your throat as soon as you get in there. So, in that way, it's kind of Nice. You know, you can sit down and take your time before you order your meal or something. Yeah. So let's see. What else? I have a list. Um, I already talked about customer service, table service, all that kind of stuff. Um, friendly people. Um, and okay, let's talk about the standard of living from what from our observation of it. And we said already they don't expect to be tipped, and you don't tip. And the reason being is. Their service staff here makes more than the service staff does in either Canada or the United States. In other words, the service staff do not depend upon supplementing their income with tips. Um, the minimum wage here was, what did we figure out? $27? It was like $23.30 or something. Yeah. X, compare that to Canada's minimum wage, which is what, or Ontario 15. is what, 15? Yeah. So it, there's a considerable difference. And not only that, I think, uh, I'm not, uh, Australians mm -hmm. might correct me here, but from what our nephew said that uh, you automatically get a, whatever job you're working in, you automatically get five weeks of holidays every year. Yeah. Uh, paid holidays. Um, and uh, there was some other thing about you get like two months off after you work so many years at a company or something. Something like you could bank sick time, it sounded like. Yeah, you can also whatever. bank your sick time. So you get so many days sick time and then you get to bank it. And you, I think uh, it's either for future use if you get sick or if uh, I think you can also take it as holidays or something. Yeah, or something he said you could do. Yeah, so they get a lot of time off. Yeah. Which basically says that employers and the government treat working people right. And if you treat working people right, if you give them a decent wage, a livable wage, um, and that, then that's going to filter out with the way they handle customers or other things in the service industry, right? They're happy. They're not miserable. They're not going into their job necessarily and saying, I hate every moment of this. 
And uh, so from that, there isn't a lot of what we consider visible poverty. Here. No. Now, I mean, there are street people here and stuff like that. Not just a lot. Like, uh, uh, not a lot that we saw, unless they control it in some way. But I, that, that isn't the case here. So, um, it, so it's a very nice uh, way of existence. And, yeah, you don't walk down at night the streets of Sydney, at least and, we didn't feel, and fear that, you know, oh, there's a sketchy. He might have, you know, might be after me for something or whatever. Um, I am sure there are incidents. It's not perfect, but it is not like going into downtown Toronto and fearing for a lot of things in Toronto. Or in some of the uh, U.S. cities and yeah. certain areas and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah, so their standard of living, I think, is good. I am sure they're complaining about their food prices in their grocery stores, the same as we are in Canada. And they're also complaining about their rental prices are, yeah. are extremely high, too. Very much the same situation that we have in our own country as well, so we get that. But generally speaking, I think the standard of living for most Australians is, is pretty good. Um, so, uh, let's see. What else can we say? Okay, one of the things I think that it contributes to their well-being uh, as people that live in, in the bigger cities is the green space. In their infrastructure, they have a lot of parks right in the center of their cities. And uh, people seem to use them. And they're well-groomed. Well-groomed, looked and after. It's not like there's a bunch of hobos living in them mm, either. Nope. So. And it's, you know, and I think that contributes to people's well-being, especially if they're city dwellers where, you know, they're not out in the, you know, vast expanse kind of a thing. Um, so that yeah, makes so it you nice. see a lot of people uh, picnicking in some of the parks. Sometimes you see people uh, on their lunch hour sitting down and having a sandwich or something, or there's, there's a yeah. lot of activity in the parks. Yeah, we saw people doing exercise classes in the park. We saw so, actually a dance, yeah, but like a dance class yeah, um, in a park too as well. Now, yes, their climate here does lend itself to probably using those parks year-round uh, and everything, but they keep them nice. They're inviting spaces. They are right, very accessible to people that are right downtown in any of the cities. Um, and they don't just have one park. They have a park system. So, you know, in Canada, in Ontario, not so much. Uh, Toronto does not, I, I'm trying to think. What does high Toronto? Park. But, well, yeah, and then they've already having fights over what they're doing with that. And yeah, uh, Toronto is definitely a concrete jungle. Yeah. Whereas here in Australia, they embrace nature and bring it into the, the city. Um, so it's part of the infrastructure. Um, speaking of the infrastructure, transportation, public transportation, very easy to get around, especially in Sydney. Um, Sydney has a tram system uh, that runs right through the middle of the downtown of the city. Very easy to use. And it goes down to the ferry docks. Mm -hmm. And the ferry docks and the uh, trains and the trams all merge into that one spot. So mm -hmm. it's easy to transfer from a tram to a train to a ferry. And they have a card system called uh, um, Opal. Opal. And, you know, it's basically, you know, a lot of cities have this. Toronto has something similar. You put money onto it and you tap on, tap off if you're getting off or on a ferry, off the tram, whatever, and the train system. Apparently, you can use your debit cards to uh, tap on and tap off. You can use your uh, Apple Pay or your yeah. whatever, or Samsung Pay or whatever. They it's very it. easy to do and very affordable uh, as well. So between the tram system, the train system, and the ferry system in Sydney, you can get anywhere you want it to go and then and then some i'm not sure about sydney but in in brisbane they have a uh they're not right on the water in brisbane uh well parts of it is but the main part of the city is on a river and uh, they have a river ferry that goes around that's a paid system but they also provide a free system for tourists and for the locals to go yeah. in certain spots on the river to popular areas on the river. So um, that's kind of nice that they have a system that's uh, also free. Yeah, you won't find that in downtown Toronto. 
at all. And in fact, in downtown Toronto, the transportation system, they always want people to take the public system, but the public system sucks uh, with it. And it has for years. It has for years. Now, Toronto has sort of a tap on, tap off system too, called a Presto card. But but that was just recently introduced. Yeah. And I don't and think they problems. can take things like debit cards and stuff like no. that. So. I mean, they're constantly saying they're improving it and they're going to do this and that and the other thing, but Toronto's a broken city in comparison to lots of other systems. I mean, yeah. So something else that's affordable, museums. They're free. Unless they have, a, or they, they're they free for their, their permanent collection or whatever, like if it's an art gallery or something, sometimes they have special events and those will cost you uh, a little bit more. Uh, but for the most part, you can walk in, walk around, see all kinds of stuff with it. King Canada, at the federal level, in Ottawa, the museums there at one point in time were free. They're not anymore. You have to pay to go to those. Um, you know, sure, they have probably, I don't know what their income tax is like here in uh, Australia, because that's obviously what a lot of these things are supported by the tax dollars. But we have that in Canada too. But it seems like we get less and less and less and pay more and more taxes. Like, I mean, we were in British Columbia last year in uh, Victoria and that, and uh, in Vancouver. And we went to an art gallery in Vancouver and we paid $30 each to, to see the collection in the art uh, gallery in Vancouver. And it was pretty sad. It was a pretty we sad paid collection. $60 together to see the collection in the art gallery. It was really sad. I felt ripped off. Yeah. Whereas here, I went into a few of the art galleries. We, it was great. We yeah. didn't pay anything. So you saw what you saw. Yeah. And I didn't feel ripped off because I didn't pay anything. And they weren't Mickey Mouse. No. There was a lot to see in yeah. those. So in fact, there were lots more to see than the art gallery in Vancouver. Oh, so yeah. That was just sad. It was just sad. sad. And we also paid a lot of money to go to the, the British Columbia Museum in Victoria. It was $30 yeah. each, too. And half of it was under construction. And the half that wasn't under construction, it was pretty sad as well. It was well. pretty sad. It's shameful, actually. I mean, yeah. as Canadians, it's embarrassing uh, for that kind of thing. Um, so... Um, yeah, let's talk about driving on the roads. Now, obviously, we're driving on the left-hand side of the road. When I say we, I mean Walter. Um, I'm just checking to say, too close, too close, too close. The shoulder, move over, get over that. Whatever. Um, but uh, speed control. Now, we already talked about the courtesy of the drivers on the road. But another thing is the speed. They will nail you. And they give you lots of warning about what the speed is and uh, where they got radar set up automatic uh, and speed control cameras and the whole bit. I mean, there's no mystery. They, they don't hide any of this. You know when they're coming up. And I think that that has helped train people to stay within the boundaries of the speed limit. You didn't see cars zigzagging in and out of traffic, uh, you know, looking like they were drag racing or something on there. People were definitely doing slightly under the speed limit in most cases as well, which makes things less hairy. Yeah, when yeah, actually, it makes it more comfortable yeah. to drive um, in in everywhere. Uh, the only complaint I have is driving around in Sydney, mm -hmm. uh, and Philippa warned me about this: is that they narrowed the lanes the, in the in the city for in Sydney. So you don't have a lot of space to drift from one side of the lane to the other. No, it's amazing we weren't touching other cars up from it. And you did see other cars that had done that because there was the telltale marks on their fenders and everything for that kind of thing. Um, signage on their roads. On the highways, it's very clear. Uh, in the city, it's very congested. There were parts where in Sydney where okay, it's telling me go this way, that way, and every which way. And that's when your GPS likes to conk out because of the buildings, right? Not yeah, there, like there is uh, a lot of the streets in Sydney are uh, one-way streets. So you got to be careful which way you're going. It's and not, not that I had a problem. But uh, the other thing that Sydney has, uh, or a lot of the areas around here have, is huge tunnels. Yeah. They have huge tunnels that go underneath the city. 
And uh, so you can be driving for 20 minutes in a tunnel. Um, so it's uh, pretty amazing the infrastructure that they have here. And it wreaks havoc on a GPS. Yeah, well, your GPS <laughs> dies as soon as yeah. you go. And then suddenly by the time it picks up, you come out of the tunnel, you've missed where you were supposed to go. Yeah, like we had that happen in Brisbane. I got out of the tunnel and uh, the GPS didn't click in fast enough. And I was faced with, do I go this way or that way? And I ended up choosing the wrong way, so. Yeah, but I said go this way, but Walter knew best. No, so, see, no, yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah right. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, right, that's exactly <laughs> what you said in the car. Go to hell. I know where, I know where I'm going. I'm going you my way. You can drive. I'm going my well, way. Well, there was one final thing in Sydney on when we were having trouble getting through Sydney, uh, uh, where I chose when he was telling me to turn left, and I chose correctly. Yeah, but I was following the GPS. Yeah, well, I was looking at the little map uh, on the thing. So anyway. Yeah, that was lucky. That was just lucky, more than anything. Um, so what else can we tell you about this trip? Oh, yeah, there was... Um, let's see. Let's talk about what you can bring in and can't bring in to Australia. Basically, bring nothing in. Don't bring food. Don't bring animals, don't bring drugs, don't bring guns. All of these things I think is a good thing. They are very much concerned about their uh, ecosystem in this country because they've had bad experiences in history. You know, like rabbits were brought in to this country a hundred years ago or at some point in time uh, to do something, I don't know. They were seeing something, I don't know, it could keep up, but they didn't have any real predators, so they have bunnies galore. Um, there's certain insects that get into their environment and wreak havoc because there isn't anything to eat those insects and they just and they destroy plant plants and things like that. Um, if you want to watch an interesting show, um, you can find episodes of it on YouTube and that it's called Border Control. And there's one for Canada, there's one for the US, there's one for Australia, there's one for Britain. And watch the ones for Australia and take a look at what people are trying to bring into this country. There are people with suitcases full of food. And when I say people, I mean Asians, um, because they're bringing in strange things. And they go through their bags and some things they'll allow in, other things they destroy. And they have shown where they have found actual like insects in it, which could decimate crops and things in Australia. They're very, very careful about that. And they tell you, do not bring any food in. And when they say any food, basically anything that's not in its original commercial wrapper, like can you bring in a chocolate bar? Probably. Um, can you bring in a dozen oranges? No. Um, and they have sniffer dogs. I mean, I think most countries are careful about uh, getting, bringing in produce and things like that. But Australia is extremely strict. Yeah, extreme. And I think that's probably a very good thing as well. Um, and I, I really admire them for their gun control. And there's also a very strict policy of uh, visas that uh, people take to come in. Because there's a lot of people trying to get in here to work illegally and uh, they are screening people very carefully as to uh, what they've applied for on their visa. Yeah, so yeah, it's don't be trying to bring anything in this country, basically, because it's not worth it. You will get stopped uh, with it, so don't even think about smuggling stuff in. Um, yeah, actually, when we went through border crossing, when we came in, it was a breeze. Yeah. It was very, very fast mm -hmm. uh, with that. So, because it's done electronically for one thing, they do that. And, and I think what happens is when you're walking through the airport, they're watching people walk oh, yeah. through the airport. And uh, I, they'll nab you if, you, if you've... Uh, in fact, they were filming border control. Yeah, they went here. Yeah. They warned us about it, but I had to sign up for people that, you know, uh, you could be filmed. Uh, in border control for the television show or whatever production. Um, so, after all this time in Australia and the whole bit, are we happy to be coming home? 
uh, yes and no. Okay. Um, not happy with how long it's going to be on the flight. Okay, but nothing we can do about that. Um, I do like being here. I do like being here because, and I suppose people say, well, what is it that you like? Well, I think we've covered it. The people for the most part are very friendly. Um, it doesn't feel like really it's a little different, but it doesn't feel like it's a completely foreign country to our own country, Canada. People speak English here, which helps uh, for the most part. Um, yeah, there's a few little quirks that are different, like the whole idea of ordering food and how that works, but you get used to that pretty quickly. That's no biggie. Um, the climate is nice. It's warm. I mean, they're into their fall right now. We did see people. Well, we've been fortunate in this trip because we didn't see much rain. No, we didn't um, at all. I mean, it was raining really hard in Sydney when we were in Brisbane. Yeah. So, um, and the one day that we were with Philippa, it did rain. Yeah. Uh, we were with Philippa, but every other day it's been like we, we kept running into things that said that it was going to rain the next day, but it turned out it didn't. Yeah. Now, it did rain really hard, as Walter said, in Sydney when we were in Brisbane, and they had flooding. Um, they had some major flooding. And it's one of the reasons we didn't go to the Blue Mountains because they were closed. Um, a lot of the roads were washed out yeah. and closed, and we didn't want to try. Even if we went where we were supposed to uh, go or wherever, it might have we might have been able to get in there, but we didn't think it was worth it. And I know somebody might somebody on our thing was said we were, they were disappointed we didn't yeah. go there. But the thing is, is that uh, in twenty sixteen when we went the first time to Australia, we took a tour of the Blue Mountains. Yeah. So it's not like we haven't seen them before. And to be honest. You, we've already told you we are urban knights. We are not people that are that much into like nature's nice. Keep it over there. Yeah, I mean, um, that, it would have been more like a stop and said, "Oh yeah, that's where it is," and then we yeah, drove yeah. on. We saw other things on our road trips uh, through here, uh, coming through that were equivalent, if not nicer, than the Blue Mountains. Yeah. So we didn't really feel it was a major thing to skip. No. The only reason I actually kind of planned to go to the Blue Mountains was so that uh, it would delay uh, the time to get into Sydney um, to check into the hotel. And um, we didn't really need that to happen. No. So, so that was fine. Um, the animals. I'm, I'm always very much into the animals of Australia. Of course, the kangaroos. And you know why? Because they're so fluffy. And you saw the pictures. Uh, feeding them and the ones we saw in various spots. But I do like the wildlife that you see in the reserves, in the zoos. Uh, I don't know if I'd be that friendly to anything out in the wild that wants to eat me. But we didn't have anything eat us. We didn't see any of that. Yeah, I know people keep going on about the wild. They're not going to go to Australia because they've got so many bad things, so many bad animals and all this. Sort of... We ne in all our travels in Australia, we've never really run into anything. No, that... because they're not living in the city. They're yeah. out in the... I they, mean, they in North people. America, you have rattlesnakes and that. And yeah. I don't think I've ever seen one live other than in a zoo, so... Yeah, and, and, you know, we have bears. They'll eat you. We have wolves. They'll eat you. You know, we have lots of things like that, but they're not in the cities. You know, they're out... And if you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone, usually speaking, too. So don't be afraid to come to Australia because you've heard this, they've got the most venomous snakes in the world and poisonous spiders. Yes, they do. But you're not going to find them on in most places you go to. If you go tramping through the outback or into the bush, you know. Yeah, I think well, a lot of the chances. venomous stuff are, is in the outback type of thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you see a snake, don't go... Try and pat it. No, no, like a coochie coochie. No, they don't. They don't coochie coochie. Um, but the kangaroos do. They're coochie coochie. Well, except the ones that you might, if you were to go. Well, first of all, you probably wouldn't get near one in the wild, because they would keep their distance. But if you cornered one, they're going to do what any animal's going to do, right? They're going to fight for their life. Now we did say, see, sadly, some roadkill. Um, a few and kangaroos. Yeah, and when you see roadkill in this country, it's major roadkill. We saw some kangaroos that had been splatted, possibly a couple of wallabies. It was really kind of hard to tell the difference between the two because they were kind of flat. Um, we saw that. 
that was there as well. Um, but for the most part, I like the animals in Australia. I love the kangaroos. They're so cute. Um, and if I haven't said it already, there's no fluffy. Of course, I've said it already. Um, so, out of this whole trip, what comes to your mind as being the most memorable? Can you pick one? I don't know if I can pick. One. I can pick. I mean, I did like. I can't, I was really nice to see the cities in between Sydney mm -hmm. and uh, the places that we stopped and the scenery and that that was quite uh, different from what we've done on other travels yeah. because a lot of times on the other travels we didn't really drive between the cities we uh, flew from one place to yeah. another um, except for that trip that we did from Melbourne to Adelaide, Adelaide yeah. and that was very memorable at that and this this too was very memorable to drive between Sydney and uh, Brisbane and then back through again uh, the other way and uh, that was really outstanding. I mean, I, I lo love Brisbane and Sydney as well. Yeah. Um, so um, those are the things that I... Yeah. And I think too, like we did a lot of walking, a lot of walking, you know, because one, we didn't want to drive the car anymore than we had to because um, of our nerves. And uh, you know, when I say our nerves, I mean both of our nerves. Uh, for it. And uh, so we saw a lot of things that you wouldn't see. And I think this time too in Sydney, we saw more of Sydney and the outlying areas than we had before because we took the, a couple of days, we took the ferries mm. to different parts. Um, I have to say one of the things I find is the variety of food. Well, basically if you love pizza, you'll have no problem getting it. Uh, if you love schnitzel, You'll have no problem getting or hamburgers or, or hamburgers. Like yeah. So, well, well, variety. We're not that adventurous. There's lots yeah. of Asian food places, yes. um, especially there's in lots Sydney. of. There's a fair bit of Indian type places. Mm -hmm. um, there is um, Turkish. There, uh, Italian Italy seems Street. to be uh, limited to pizza and stuff like yeah. that. There, there, and sometimes like uh, we had sort of a Greek plate or whatever. Greek food is served differently here. Yeah, than and you saw that is. on yesterday's and video. The variety isn't there. Like you can't seem to get lusaka and stuff no. like that. Or it's like uh, souvlaki is pretty much it. And even then, it's not really served the way I would. We had a difficult time finding little off the track, nice little bistros. Um, there are a lot of coffee places. A yeah. lot of coffee and there's places. a lot of bar places. Yeah. And um, then in the touristy area, there's restaurants, but a lot of the variety, there isn't a lot of variety of food. Now, one of the problems we have is we don't like seafood that yeah. much. So uh, there's a lot of seafood restaurants. So, so I mean, we can't if you're into to seafood, that. then maybe that yeah. might be a little bit more. But I mean, the total variety of food isn't that uh, astounding no. uh, from what we're used to yeah there's a little bit more variety in our area uh where we live for food types yeah. and that than what we found here um now maybe it's just because we didn't go to the right places right. and things like that yeah. so yeah that then which is quite possible um that's one of our drawbacks anytime we travel we always pick the wrong places I mean, to eat <laughs> we had lots of really what i could say uh great memories from what yeah. we, we did when we were here um uh, but uh and there's probably lots of things that stick out in my mind oh, but yeah. one of the things was driving um between the two cities and walking around and observing things yeah. and stuff like that and that we did a lot of in that and of course meeting up with philippa yeah, uh, as that, well that we had a great, great day yeah. with philippa and, and meeting up with your new nephew and with meeting up with my nephew too i would like to spend a little longer with my nephew yeah. but that just didn't work into his scheme of things and and that either but uh yeah that was all very nice and yeah so overall yeah we have a good trip that's possibly why we don't want to leave it yet to go yeah, back I to know reality we're, the weather is nice and the uh Except that last night we were sitting outside in our shorts and yeah. and short sleeve shirts, and people 
it was 22 degrees Celsius, which is a little over 70. And people are walking around in uh, literally ski goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They just, they don't. And a lot of people cold. were wearing sweaters and, and, well, not too many people in ski coats, but there were a few. And there were lots of people wearing, like, Almost everybody was wearing a sweater except yeah, for us. For us, yeah. And uh, it was, I felt it was a little humid. Yeah, actually. <laughs> so I was kind of hot, even wearing short sleeve shirts. But, uh, and for us, that would be a nice summer evening. Yeah. <laughs> but there are a lot of people here who are like very cold. And yeah. Like sitting around well, not used to it. a light jacket going like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so different things. Of course, if the roles were reversed, if uh, we were sitting at 32, 42, or 32, 33 Celsius, 35 Celsius, day in, day out with humidity, uh, we'd be bitching about that. So, you know, it's wherever you are in the world. So, I think that's it. Um, I think this is probably our last video about Australia now. You're probably going, yay. We will return uh, to our usual routines and things like that. Uh, in the next few days once we get home and what do we have planned today well we're kind of stuck at the airport um so i mean technically we are we could take a train in yeah we could take if a we train. want to but, but we've done the we're same. kind of we're sitting done it. it we've done so, it and time to rest yeah it's time so we'll just get ourselves psyched up like we're we're going to go now and, and have like some lunch and something to drink here in the hotel and we've made a reservation for dinner tonight in their main dining room uh, which is a little higher end uh, dining uh, there. And uh, and then tomorrow the journey begins home. And it'll be nice to get home, but I, I think we'll be suffering from jet lag when we get back home. So tune in on uh, Sunday afternoon, 4 p.m. for Stephen and Walter Live if we're, comato if we're not comatose. At the time for that and of course advance notice as well don't forget my retreat the idiot quilter retreat on may the 4th more coming up very shortly about that for registration registration opens this coming saturday april the 20th 9 a.m um so do check out the video i made three weeks ago about the whole process of the retreat and whatnot and yeah we'll get back into the swing of things once again so have a good one. We'll see you on the other side of the world soon. Bye. Bye.